Hey everyone, Santide here. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, so today I just finished looking at all the status long swords in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak as of title update one. And it's really interesting because they are actually very, very strong. Um, on average, status long swords are going to do way more damage than every other long sword in the game. Um, again, specific monsters, a specific element weapon is probably going to be better, but if you just want to make one weapon, a status longsword is going to be your best bet. Uh, before I go into the builds though, a very quick uh, intro to some of the maps. I might release a proper video on this later on. Uh, but basically, the damage you do from status is going to depend on a bunch of things. It's going to depend on how you attack the monster, it's going to depend on your build, and it's also going to depend on the actual quest. So the quest you do uh, changes how much status damage you do. Um, for this whole thing, I assumed you're going to fight the hardest possible version of a monster, usually the Anomaly quest version. Uh, but yeah, so without further ado, the builds. And so the best general use longsword in the game is the Wyvern Blade Luna, um, the poison longsword from Gold Brathian. Uh, and this one is really, really good. It does about 5% more damage on average than the Sunderer, which is the best dead purely raw weapon in the game. So yeah, the extra bit of poison you do is actually very, very, very significant, um, especially because it actually has pretty solid poison at 42. Um, some other long swords have higher poison, but have significantly lower raw and thus do less damage. Uh, oddly enough, uh, Migres' Asterism, which is the Lucent Narcuga Longsword, can have higher raw, especially if you take into account Grinder. But even with Grinder, the lower poison that this Longsword has means it actually does overall less damage. So basically, Wyvern Blade Luna has the best compromise between raw and poison that it does more damage than every other poison Longsword. Uh, the build is basically identical to the build for the Sunderer. Um, so Lunagar on Helm, Archfiend Armor Ballo, Barrier the Fan Braces, Sinister Garage Tacits, and Silver Soul Reeves. Um, but yeah, basically if you use the Wyvern Blade Lena, you will do more damage on average. But Poison isn't the only uh, really good status. There's a second one, which is Blast. Um, so Blast, the best longsword, is the Devil's Steel, which you get from Scorned Magnamala. Um, so this is the standard Blast build, so it uses Lunagar and Helm, Barith Male X, um, Golden Moon Braces, Sister Grudge Tacits, and Silver Soul Reeves. Um, so overall, Blast is going to do less damage than Poison. Uh, there are specific matchups where Blast is indeed better, um, so mostly going to be Valstrax and um, Narwa the All Mother. But this honestly ends up becoming preference based. So for me, for example, I would much prefer a blast weapon because blast does damage to parts and can help you break parts faster. Poison does not. So the blast weapon is going to do around 3% less damage than the poison weapons. But if I'm not sure if it's, it might be a solid compromise if you want to break parts more easily. Now, this is a normal blast build, but um, because the devil is a deal, has 20 white and 20 purple, you can actually use um, a grinder build relatively efficiently. Um, and this grinder build is pretty good. Um, so it does more damage than a non-grinder build if you can keep grinder up at least 60% of the time, which you should be able to do. I think that's fairly reasonable. So the set of this changes. So we go Lunagar and Helm, Sinister Garage Garb, Barrier Fan Braces X, Archfiend Armor Ura, and Silver Soul Greaves. Uh, this is just so we get enough slots to use the new Grinder S decoration, which is a three slot jewel. But yeah, if you have that, you will do more damage than the standard build if you can keep um, Grinder S up at least 60% of the time. Now, even then, poisons like the Waffen Blade Luna is still going to damage the um, Devil's Deal. But again, if you like the Blast more than Poison, this is the way to go. Um, on that note, so if I go back for one second, um, so Megrez's Asterism it can also use Grinder, but yeah, even with Grinder, the raw is not worth it. Um, a lot of this is just because Megrez's Asterism only has one slot Rapid Decker, so you need to use an augment to use Monster Exploit, which is very, very strong. So yeah, Megrez's Asterism surprisingly is worse than Rough and Lake Luna, even with Grinder. 
But yeah, so with that done, uh, I was gonna take a quick look at the damage comparisons. So what I did was I looked at the two status longswords, compared them to every single monster, and compared those to the element stuff. And here we can see the monsters and the weapons that are best used against them. So you can see here that uh, it's usually still going to be the element weapon that's the best. Uh, in most cases, an element weapon is going to be optimal. Uh, that range up top is just because I didn't look at status on every monster, uh, mostly the apexes, which don't have a normal master rank quest. But yeah, so usually Waffen Blade Luna is going to be the best of all the status ones, but Devil's Eagle, for example, is very good against Crimson, Crimson Glove Alstrax. Uh, here's the second page, uh, very, very similar story. So Waffen Blade Luna is good in most situations. Um, Devil's Steel is optimal against Narwar, the Old Mother. Um, and yeah, the last sheet, which you can see here. Yeah, so Element is very, very strong. Wildlight Luna is still good in some situations, so Scorned Magnamalo and Toby Kodachi if you use higher raw foes playstyles. But yeah, so bottom line, um, Element's still going to be stronger if you want to make dedicated elemental builds, but if you just want to make one raw of poison, are going to be good on average, and still optimal every now and then. But yeah, uh, so that's not all though, uh, because we also have uh, other statuses. So very quickly, uh, we have some sleep builds. So this is a build using Nightmare Frilt Slash. Um, so the Nightmare Frilt Slash is 28 sleep and loses about 5% raw damage compared to Sunderer. Uh, this is pretty significant, but 28 sleep is quite a lot. You should be able to put a monster to sleep around like five or six times, uh, assuming they have, uh, looking at the anomaly monsters. Um, the Antique Machina LS has lower sleep at around 18, and it does about 4% less damage than Sunderer. Um, so this one has slightly more raw, but significantly less sleep, and the sleep difference is honestly pretty big. Um, Nightmare Field Slash should almost certainly get one or two extra sleeps, and I think those one or two extra sleeps make it more practical than Antique Machina, especially because the raw difference isn't that great. Um, but Antique Machina LS does look very, very cool. So if you like Antique Machina LS, you can use it. Um, and the last status to talk about is Paralysis. Um, so we only get one Paralysis Longsword, which is the Spirit Binder, and this one honestly isn't very good. Um, you lose about 8% raw damage compared to the Sunderer, which is quite a lot. And honestly, Paralysis probably isn't as good as Sleep, um, especially because, you know, we can use the Sacred Chief combo to do a lot of wake up damage, which you can't really do with Paralysis. So yeah, I wouldn't really recommend this build, but it is here just for completion. Um, but yeah, so with that, um, those should be all of our builds. Um, one quick note, uh, so in the previous videos I showed a bunch of elemental builds and whatever else. Um, I slightly corrected some of the builds since then, so basically I found out that parts of these can't really be added to one another. There are some strange maps behind it. I did a write-up and I put it in the description. Basically I just need to apply some correction factor to the end of the results. Um, but with those I did uh, regenerate a lot of the sets and you can see those in the description. But yeah, so final summary and conclusions. Basically, the Wild Blade Luna and the Devil's Deal, with or without Grinder S, are the best for general use longswords, depending on whether you like Poison or Blast better, and whether you want to use Grinder S or not. Uh, but both are still optimal against some monsters, uh, even though Elemental Longswords are usually going to be stronger in their specific fights. And with that, yeah, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Uh, so next video will probably be a full video just on calculating status, um, because I think that's actually easier than a lot of people give it credit for. Um, I would also like to thank the people from the Math Wildos Nest Discord server for their help in actually doing the status calculations, uh, specifically Poppy and Echoes Part 1 for the useful conversations and their spreadsheets. So yeah, I'll do that, and I'll go back to Lance for a brief hit. And otherwise, I will see you all next time, I hope. Bye-bye.